Hi guys, it's Ariana. Welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we're going to be reading some more scary stories. So please ignore the fact that I have a huge scratch on my face. I think it was literally for myself. I probably just scratched myself when I touched my face and I don't know where it came from, but it showed up today and we're just gonna ignore it. So as per usual, we're going to be reading some more scary stories and I have my Wicked Candle in here setting the mood for a spooky story video and I don't really have anything else to ramble about. So let's just jump on into the spooky stories. So I think I'm gonna start with Reddit because I have a few Reddit stories here that are really, really creepy and really great and I'm excited to read them. So the first one is from the no sleep section and it's from the Reddit author Salty Snickers Bar and it's titled, one of my old friends from summer camp said he saw a ghost in our cabin one night and now I realized what he really saw that night. When I was a kid, I used to love going to summer camp every year. Even if I wouldn't go with my school friends, I was still happy to make new ones. I've never been shy or socially awkward. I've always been popular, never cocky or rude, though like you might think. I tried my best to be nice to everybody. I always have. One summer, probably my second time at summer camp, when I was eight, I was put in a cabin with kids that were super shy and reserved, who never spoke and just kept to themselves. The boy who I shared a bunk with was about my age, so I tried to make conversation with him over the first week. I eventually found out his name was Norman, and he seemed almost hesitant to talk to me over that week. But after he started speaking to me, I realized he was a great kid, and funny too. He would never shut up when he was talking to me, and we did everything together. He was loud and crazy. Then, he just stopped. Out of nowhere, he just stopped talking, like he wouldn't speak to me or anyone else for that matter. I asked him, Hey buddy, what's the matter? And he would just shake his head and walk away. I was disappointed that I had lost my friend, but I thought it was best not to dwell on it and just try to make new friends. If he doesn't want to talk, who am I to force him? I got along pretty much fine without Norman and things seemed to be going okay. One night, I woke up in the middle of the night, like around four in the morning, unable to get myself back to sleep. I got up to grab some candy I had hidden in my bag and it was pretty dark so I couldn't see anything. I thought they must have just slipped to the bottom of the bag and there was no point in searching so I gave up. As I turned around I saw a figure standing upright in Norman's bed. Startled, I jumped back in fear and took out my flashlight. I don't think I'll ever forget the look on his face. His eyes were bloodshot and he was hyperventilating. I climbed up onto his bed and asked him if he was okay. He said, I saw something. I see it every night. It won't leave me alone. It's going to kill me. My little sister would wake up crying most nights, but they were nightmares. So I hugged him and told him it was probably just a dream and he'd be fine. This became a routine where he would wake up every night saying a person was in the cabin staring at him with a knife and they would get even closer every night. He would usually wake us all up with his hysterical crying and nobody in that cabin ever got a good night's rest. When camp was finally over, Norman left to go home and nobody really saw him again. I forgot about the story because it seemed stupid and was just about a troubled kid with nightmares. I wish I knew what was happening sooner. My husband is a huge fan of crime related stuff. He watches a certain documentary which discusses a murderer from each time period. And the episode he was watching was about a 1980s killer. I was bored, so I sat down to watch it with him. When I saw a picture of a little boy who was ginger and smiley, I'd recognize the face anywhere. It was Norman. The narrator went on to discuss how he first encountered this murderer at the summer camp and would come to him every night. A month after he left, he was found dead in his bedroom, stabbed by one of the camp leaders who was sent to jail about 13 years for stalking and murder. And that's how they ended the story. Oh my God, that's so sad. That has such a sad ending and that's so fucking creepy and oh my God. Jesus Christ, I don't even know. I'll have to put trigger warnings at the beginning of this video because that's fucking terrifying and oh my God, I don't really read a whole lot of true crime or anything like that. This is a no sleep story, so I don't believe it's a true story, but true crime terrifies me because just because people are so fucking weird. Like ghosts and goblins and demons and all that stuff, it's scary, but like it's not quite as scary as like humans. I don't know. Humans are just awful. <laughs> so thank you so much to Salty Snicker Bar for allowing me to read your story and let's jump into the next one. So this one's from the no sleep section again and it's from the author Nutella Novella and it's titled I think my roommate is a vampire. This sounds idiotic right? Everyone knows vampires aren't real but just hear me out. It started about a year ago when my old roommate decided to move in with his girlfriend without any warning. His name was on the lease too and I could have just forfeited my half of the deposit and found a cheaper place but that's really hard to do on short notice, especially in the middle of a semester. So I put out ads everywhere I could think of online and around campus for a new roommate, not really expecting much. To my initial delight, I got a nibble within a week. 
She was a quiet grad student who'd had some sort of falling out with her own roommate and needed a place to land. Perfect, or so I thought. She moved in and covered her half of the expenses when bills came due at the start of the next month. It looked like I managed to dodge a bullet. And maybe in my relief at not being evicted, I ignored a few things I should have picked up on. You see, I almost never saw my roommate. She stayed locked up in her room most days when I was home, though I occasionally bumped into her watching something on our shared TV late at night. Her explanations were reasonable. Night shift work, as a medical intern, sleep schedules, it all seemed legit. She was really weird about mirrors though. She doesn't have a single one in her room, which is odd for a girl. Nor does she ever keep any food in the fridge. She doesn't have any cookware. She never has friends over. All of these things I could write off somehow, if it weren't for the dreams. You see, I keep having this reoccurring dream about twice a month. I wake up with her perched on the corner of my bed. In these dreams, the room is utterly black. I sleep with blackout curtains because of an obnoxiously bright street lamp outside my window. But somehow, I know she's there. I never say anything to her. She just slithers under the covers with me, and her body is cold. Then she talks to me in a low voice, speaking words I can never seem to remember in the morning, and she kisses my neck. I get that cold feeling, and it explodes through my whole body. Then I wake up. I'm always a little groggy and lethargic after I have one of those dreams. Thirsty too, like working in the hot sun, sweating like a pig all day, thirsty. And the chronic fatigue has only gotten worse. After I fainted at work one night, my boss insisted that I make a doctor's appointment. Guess what they found? I'm anemic. My family has no history of anemia, none. The doctors can't explain it. They just put me on a regime of iron supplements and called it good. I tried to ask her to move out, but whenever I talk to her, I always seem to forget the purpose of the conversation and get sidetracked on something she wants to talk about instead. And then I go to bed having forgot about the whole thing until the next time I have one of those dreams. I think I might be losing my mind. Either that or my roommate really is what I think she is. I want to move out. I've even packed all my stuff up a couple times, only to wake up the next morning with everything back in its place, wondering if I only dreamed about packing. One night I just got in my car and drove as far as I could before sleep got the better of me and I had to pull off the highway. The next morning, I woke up, parked at the curb outside my apartment. I'd write that one off as a weird dream too, if it weren't for the credit card statements that has me getting gas in a town about three hours drive from where I live on the night in question. That could just be credit card fraud except I know it's not. I've tried telling people about what's going on, but no one ever believes me. Family, friends, they all think it's some kind of joke or hallucination on my part, especially after they meet my roommate. Everyone likes her, even though she's weird. I even like her, though I'm scared to death of her. I find myself waking up in the middle of the night lately with this insane urge to go out and talk to her. I know where she'll be. I can hear the TV turn to low volume in the other room. Some nights I succeed in resisting, but most times I end up getting up and sitting with her until near dawn when she heads to bed. It's gotten to where I can't force myself to tell people about my fears anymore. Even running this all out on an anonymous forum is hard to do. When I think about including my personal identity details though, I can't. My fingers simply refuse to type that information out. I don't think I'd be able to write as much as I have, except that I think my feeble attempts to get away amuse her somehow. I can't escape her anymore. I need help, but I know one is going to help me. I feel like I should just accept my fate. One of these nights, I'll be the one perched on her bed and then it'll be over. I know it's somehow. I won't want to escape then. I'll be completely hers until I'm dead or maybe worse. I've written my story out about three times now and each time I found some reason to delete it rather than posting. I'm not going to hit discard this time though. I won't do it. If you're reading this, please try to find some way of helping me. I don't know how you'd do it. I can't know. If I actually believe that someone could, I don't think I'd be able to write this much. I want to delete it, but I'm going to hit post before I talk myself out of it again. And that's how they ended the story. So obviously that's a fictional story. Like there's no such thing as vampires, I don't think. I mean, if there's any vampires watching this, let me know, I would love to be young forever. <laughs> but that's a really, really good story. I really liked it, it was really well written. It's really fucking creepy and I just, I liked it. It was a really fucking creepy story. So if you have any idea how to help this person, uh, leave a comment down below. If you think it's real, leave a comment down below because that's fucking terrifying. But thank you so much to Nutella Novella for allowing me to read your story. That is so fucking creepy and I loved it. <laughs> so this one's from the True Scary Story section and it's from the Reddit author, Me Likes Frogs and it's titled, There's Someone in My House. I've said this a lot before, but this time I actually mean it. I was relaxing in my bed for a bit before deciding to get up to use the bathroom. All of my family is asleep and they're early to bed, early to rise type of people. All lights were off when I got up, so I bring my phone as a flashlight. I cross the hall to the bathroom with no problem. 
As I'm washing my hands, I pause, hearing random clicking. Two quick clicks, right after each other, then a short pause. They get faster while still being spread out. It's definitely human, or something close to a human. It's like a clicking sound one might make flicking on and off a light switch if they're bored, or in this instance, the sound of the lamp in the living room being turned on and off, or so I think. I can't tell where the sound is coming from, so I finish washing my hands, turn on my light, and march out of our hall bathroom and search the house. Nothing. Odd. I'm a bit unsettled and disturbed. I go back to my room. I finally got comfortable after doing a quick sweep of my room. I moved to lay down as I have to get up early tomorrow. I scrolled around on social media for a while when I heard the very unmistakable noise. Absolutely nothing else can make the sound. It's at the shower curtain getting swept back. I stop, now fully alert, and listen. I haven't heard the footsteps of anyone or hear something hit the bottom of the shower. So something could have fallen and hit the curtain and a family member could have done it. I hear it again, someone moving in the shower. The realization hits me slowly. The tapping and clicking wasn't coming from the living room or another bedroom. It was coming from inside my bathroom. That's why there was no footsteps when I heard the curtain move. That's why I can't tell exactly what direction the clicking is coming from. The whole time, whoever or whatever it was, was in the same room as me. Which gets us to the present. It's been half an hour. No odd noise has come up since then. But I'm still paralyzed in bed. And I haven't gone to check. I think I'll go do that now. And that's how the end of the story. So there's just like an intruder in their fucking shower. That's terrifying. Oh my fucking God. Thank you so much for allowing me to read your story. That's so fucking creepy. And I hate that so much. Oh my God. <laughs> the next one that I'm going to read is from the True Scary Story section. And it's from the Reddit author C. Worthiness Fit 9246 <laughs> So this one's titled Something in the Woods. Hey everyone. For a little backstory, my name is Miles and I live in a small town in Georgia. Most of my life, I lived in a community, but recently moved to a more rural area. The house that I'm in is around 45 to 50 years old and sits on a good plot of land. Anyway, let's get to the story. So I moved in a few months ago and nothing was out of the ordinary. I live with my mom, sister, and three dogs. When I hear something outside or an odd noise, I would chalk it up to just being one of them. After two weeks of moving in, that's when things started. One night, I just finished doing all the things I needed to do before bed and was relieved to see my comfy bed. I fell asleep like any other night, but woke up around two in the morning to this odd noise, like someone calling for something. I grabbed my phone, walked over to the window. I live on the second story. I shine my flashlight outside, nothing, just our yard and the woods. Then I hear it again, this time we're clear. Someone was yelling out for help. I got extremely nervous and took a step back from the window. I was about to walk to my mom's room to tell her, but I stopped myself. I waited to hear it again before going to tell her, but I heard nothing for about two minutes, so I went back to bed. When I woke up the next morning, I asked my mom and my sister if they heard anything. Both of them said they didn't hear anything and they slept like a baby. I brushed it off as my mind playing tricks on me and went to do some school and yard work. Night comes and I'm letting my dogs run around in the backyard and have some outdoor time before it was lights out. I was playing Clash of Clowns on my phone when I realized I didn't hear my dogs playing or walking around. I looked up and they were staring at something in the little clearing before you hit the woods. I looked in the direction of where their heads were and saw an outline of a deer. This deer was on its four legs, but just staring at me. I told the dogs to come in and they didn't move a muscle. I kept yelling and yelling until my mom came outside to ask me what the issue was and I told her to look in the direction of the deer but there was nothing there. The dogs were still staring at something, so I just pulled them inside and locked the door. When I looked out the window, I saw it again, but this time it was closer. I locked every door in the house and headed for bed. I woke up around 2 a.m. again to someone yelling, but this time I wasn't the only one who heard it. My mom sent me a text saying, is that you? To which I replied, no. I listened very carefully for the yelling. This time it was saying something, boom is the name of my youngest dog. I was shitting bricks and ran to my mom's room to talk about what the fuck was going on when I froze at the door. I heard something walk outside under my window. I didn't move at all and was basically pissing myself thinking someone was about to break in. It's probably a good time to mention my sister was at a friend's house for the night, so it was just me and my mom and the dogs. Whatever was outside walking around didn't sound human. It sounded like a deer or a dog walking around. My dogs sleep in my mom's room, so I thought it was a deer that I saw earlier. Then the most terrifying thing I could think of took place. 
The sound of this thing was nothing like I've ever heard before. I ran to my mom's room and she was already on the phone with the police. Stupidly, I walked to my mom's window, opened it and said, fuck off, asshole. I heard fast and heavy footsteps run from my side of the house to my mom's side. I closed the window and I heard this thing scratch at the walls of the first floor. Then the police sirens filled the air and this thing bolted into the woods. I looked out the window and I saw it, a fucking deer running on two legs. The police knocked on our door and got our statements. We walked around the house and saw footprints, scratches on the wood and windows, and even a piece of an antler. When the cops left, me and my mom stayed up until light broke in the sky. I'm very familiar with, I'm not gonna say the name, it's SW, but never thought they were real. This was only four days ago, and I still hear this thing at night. If anyone can help me, you're more than welcome to reply. So they saw, I'm not gonna say the name of it because you're not actually supposed to say the name of it. So they saw an SW in their woods and it's fucking terrifying. And this is in the true scary story section. So this actually fucking happened. So that's fucking terrifying. Oh my God, I hate that so much. I hope you guys stay safe and I don't have any way to help you. But if anybody that's watching this video can help them, please let us know in the comment section down below because that's fucking terrifying. Oh my God. All right, so thank you so much for allowing me to read your story. That is so fucking terrifying. And now we're going to move over to Instagram. I do have a couple Instagram, well, by couple, I mean, I have nine unread stories from you guys that I need to read and a bunch of emails to read. So I'm trying to get through everything as fast as possible. And thank you so much for sending me your guys' stories. I am so overwhelmed in like the best way possible. So I'm just gonna start with the latest one that I've got, like the longest one that's been sitting waiting. So I'm not gonna read the names of the Instagrammers that are sending me their stories. I'm just gonna say anonymous and here we go. Hey, I came across your YouTube channel at the end of September, start of October, and I listened to your videos while doing schoolwork. I have a few paranormal stories and if this gets put into a video, I hope you enjoy it. I'll be more than happy to send in some more. Also, the makeup in each video, chef's kiss. Thank you so much, <laughs> you're so sweet. So I live in a flat. I'm from the UK, by the way. So my names for certain things may be different from what you say in the US. I am actually not in the US, I'm in Canada. So keep that in mind. So my flat, before it was a flat, used to be a care home. So that means some elderly people died here and they could possibly still be attached to this place. At the time that I moved into this place, I was maybe six years old. And ever since, I've started to listen to paranormal stories and learnt that younger kids are more likely to encounter spirits than adults. I'm the eldest sibling, so I had to kind of do what my younger brother wanted to do to make him happy, so that he didn't kick up a fuss. So he loved Transformers, and I had to watch all of the movies. I'm not complaining, I ended up loving the movies. But anyways, I was sitting in the living room watching the TV, and a scary advert for a series came on, and it just shocked me, so I was watching it. My living room and my kitchen is an open concept. There's a wall that blocks the door to the living and the kitchen, so I'm watching this advertisement and I see from the corner of my eye something run, but it wasn't fast enough because I could literally turn my head at a slow pace and see it run past. It looked like the yellow transformer of Bumblebee. I know it's stupid. I ran into the corner over my fridge was and I remember being so confused and I wouldn't go near it for days. Another time, I was lying in my bed and my brother and I share a room. At the time, I was too young to have a phone and I didn't know the time. I remember waking up in my sleep and feeling very uneasy, like something wasn't right. I was trying to fall back asleep and I remember I was on my side, sitting up, and my duvet came off and my side was exposed, and I felt something grab my waist, like how someone would do if they were scaring someone. I remember that I screamed and then really realized what had happened, so I looked at my brother, only to find him fast asleep. I never told anyone about these experiences, I just kept them to myself. And that's how they ended the story. So if you have any more stories that you wanna share with us, please send them to me, that's so fucking creepy. So you just felt something like grab you in the middle of the night, that's so fucking creepy. I don't really have anything to say about the Transformer one that just kind of sounds funny, that you just like saw it run past you in your house. Like, sounds like a spirit just like messing with you, but that's so fucking creepy. And thank you so much for sharing. I think I'm gonna read one more story and then we will end the video because I've been reading for like, 30 minutes. <laughs> so this one is another Instagram story. Hi, I came across your channel a few days ago and I have been binge watching since. I felt inspired to share a few stories of my own. Also, I love your content. So maybe about five years ago, my family moved into a new house. This house was about 160 years old and the seller did disclose to us that a little girl, an old man and a young woman have previously passed away here. We thought, okay, but didn't really think much of it. The first night we stayed at the house, I slept in my room. 
My room was the farthest down the hallway from everywhere else where they slept. So that night, I closed my eyes for what felt like 10 minutes and was woken up, or I thought I was awake, except I couldn't move or speak. All I could do was move my eyes. When I opened my eyes, I looked at my closet door, which was open, and all of a sudden, a little girl with a white dress and a teddy bear began coming out of the closet. I was terrified. But what was more terrifying was that her eyes were completely pitch black, and the only expression on her face was with her mouth completely wide open that looked like a deep, dark hole. I began to squirm and I was stressed because all I wanted to do was run away, but I couldn't. Every time I blinked, she got one step closer until finally she was right in front of my face screaming. I woke up, I was sweating, crying, and I didn't sleep for the rest of the night. Though that was a dream, I never experienced this sort of thing ever until I moved into that house. The next story is from my mother. It's a short one, but still creepy. One day, after a couple of months after moving, my mom was looking out a window, drinking her coffee, when she felt someone lightly place their hand on her shoulder. Thinking it was my dad, she turned around to talk, but there was no one there. Lastly, this one isn't much, but the room my little sister sleeps in, she can never sleep. In the closet, there are scratch marks, so deep that you would think it was an animal. Her room has always given me bad vibes. I've never felt comfortable and the energy is always loud if that makes sense. But thank you for letting me share my stories. Even though they may not seem scary, they were very scary to me. Thank you so much. I love your content and I hope you respond. Oh, thank you so much for sending me your stories. Your stories are really creepy and that's fucking terrifying. So don't like that at all. I hate the fact that you like were experiencing, there's buzz. I hate the fact that you were experiencing sleep paralysis and then you literally had like a little girl come out of the closet that was like a black eyed child and like no like mouth, no eyes, nothing, and just comes out and screams at you. That's fucking terrifying. No, thank you. That's traumatizing, actually. Oh my God, I definitely wouldn't have went back to sleep either. That's so creepy. But I think this is where I'm gonna end the video tonight because I need to go get some water. I'm getting tongue-tied. The cars are really loud. And honestly, I'm just really warm. We've been in here for about 30 minutes. So I think this is a pretty long video. I hope it's long enough for you guys. I know you guys always comment that you want longer videos. I'm trying my best, but I suck at reading. If you guys are interested in this wig, it is from Lush Wigs. I will link it down below so you guys can go check it out. It is on the last chance section on Lush Wigs. So if you are interested in this wig, I highly recommend going and picking it up soon because it's probably gonna be discontinued in the next couple of weeks. They did sponsor one of my videos and that's why I got this wig. It's absolutely beautiful and I love them so much. So if you want a lace front wig, definitely go check out Lush Wigs. They are amazing. They didn't sponsor this video or anything, but I'm just adding that in there just so you guys know if you guys are interested in this wig to go check them out on lushwigs.com because they're amazing and I love them. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys did enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below for more content like this. And I will see you guys at the next video. Bye.